Okay. So welcome, everybody. This is Debbie Dashinger, and welcome to Dare to Dream podcast. It's such an honor and pleasure to be here with you at this totally bizarre time in history and in life. Where else would I want to be but with you? Um, power to the people, I want to say, and whatever it is you're doing. I just feel at the same time, this is strange. This is one of the most powerful times in the world. And I'm telling myself every day that what comes up for me is begging to be healed. End of story. Anything that comes up outside of joy, happiness, contentment, satisfaction, digging my life, all of that. But anything that feels really uncomfortable is begging to be healed. And so I'm literally looking at breathing into not running away from, not resisting, not trying to analyze, just being with. Because chances are these are defaults I've been living in for a long time, right? And how does that resonate for you? So welcome to Dare to Dream. I'm so excited to be bringing you an amazing show today, I promise you. And I'm gonna be bringing on an amazing guest in a little bit. And first from listener S. Bulil, who wrote in, thank you for this uplifting and oh so connecting podcast, Debbie. I enjoy your bright, bold energy. I appreciate your curiosity. I am fascinated by your depth and eagerness to learn. I love your joy in conversation. Thanks for Dare to Dream. I'm deeply grateful. And I am so grateful for all of you. This show has been nominated for two people's podcast choice awards, a Webby award. I mean, ding, 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 those are my tears because I was supposed to go to the Webby awards in New York in May, clearly I won't be there, but I still hold a beautiful thought for all the nominees. And uh, you can subscribe to this show on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spreaker, Anchor FM, BBS Radio, YouTube. Definitely go to YouTube. If you listen to the show, but you'd like to see myself and the guests, I've had people do that and say, oh my God, it like bumps up to the show to a whole nother something, something. So that's youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger, also on iHeartRadio and more. Do leave a review. Thank you so much. And just know that we have ranked in the top 100 in self-improvement in all of the USA, as well in many other countries in the top 10 in South Africa and Slovakia and Vietnam, et cetera. So we love that you listen and we love that you're tuning in and enjoying the conversation. I'm deeply grateful also to the sponsors of this show, Dr. Dane here, D-A-I-N-H-E-E-R and Access Consciousness, who do extraordinary work out into the world. They do energy shifting work. So, hey, what a great time, right? To align and get yourself aligned. These are people that you can do online classes with. You can listen to online audios. You can uh, purchase things in their store. They are worldwide. So just know now more than ever, you don't even have to leave your home. You can literally download help from accessconsciousness.com. So my question to you is, want to know about the greatest collection of rare and special oils that celebrity fans, Shailene Woodley, Carrie Ann Moss, Mandy Moore, and Alanis Morissette all use? You want to know the source? It is my guest today. And my guest is Nadine Artemis. She's the author of two books, including Renegade Beauty, Reveal and Revive Your Natural Radiance, and also Holistic Dental Care, The Complete Guide to Healthy Teeth and Gums. And she is the creator of Living Libations, a luxury line of organic, wild, and pure botanical natural health and beauty products. I've actually got a facial wash of hers that I'm using right now, and it's, it's delicious. And I'm sure, seriously, besides fantastic skin, I actually could eat it. It's that organic. Nadine Artemis is an aromacologist with immune enhancing formulas and medicinal blends for health and wellness. Her potent dental serums are used worldwide and provide the purest oral care available. She's received glowing reviews in the Hollywood Reporter, Los Angeles Times, New York Magazine, People, L, Yoga Journal, Natural Health, The New York Times, and National Post. Aveda founder, Horst, 
Reckelbacher calls Nadine a pure flower of creativity. To learn more about her and her products, go to livinglibations.com. And I welcome Nadine to the Dare to Dream show. Hello. Thank you so much for having me on. Yes, it is such an honor and a pleasure to have you here. And um, let's just start with where you are right now, because you and I were chatting a little bit. You're having some very extraordinary circumstances. Tell us a little bit about where you are and what's going on. Nathan. Yeah, well, our quarantine was interrupted with a power outage. So we discovered a whole pole had fallen on the driveway. And so we're without power for the past few days. And it's probably going to be another week because, of course, there's less hydro workers right now and all that sort of stuff. So luckily, we have a few hundred acres. There's another cabin. So we made it out to here, got some battery packs. And uh, here I am broadcasting live from our forest. <laughs> I'm so impressed by you. It wasn't even a hit. Is there anything you're doing right now unexpected? that is actually serving you something unique that you're incorporating maybe a practice or a way of doing your day or a new thing that you've brought into your life that you may want to carry forward that you can share with us yeah i think one of the main things is i do uh you know i normally we I run this beautiful business and we have a whole team but i do often work from the home office because i you know as the captain of the ship, I need that, that really wide perspective. And, and I'm working with remote teams and clients, so I, I'm used to working at home. So that's normal, but one thing that's really different is I'm finding like, instead of just going for like a full, you know, eight hour run of work or whatever, I'm doing things in smaller segments, they're kind of a cushion around them. And then I'm like meditating about six times a day. Wow having these little pockets and then like doing something and then like taking that pause, feeling, you know, going into alignment, feeling the alignment, loving the alignment, and then going back out into then doing something else. So that's probably a good thing to carry forward. <laughs> what are you finding by virtue of hitting the pause button, extricating yourself from that busy life and going inside or with the all that is and meditating? What is it bringing into your life that's a surprise? Well, it's like I'm feeling, I'm taking the time to feel that those good feelings. I mean, I love, I could, you know, I feel like I could live in the meditative state. Obviously, that's not practical. But so it's just really nurturing to go, to go, to feel that. And despite, you know, what's going on, it's like, you know, I could, I tune in and I'm feeling good. And so, when you feel good, when you have a good thought, it's good to build on that and keep it going and get, get that momentum going. So I'm finding the meditations giving that momentum. And also, you know, if, if I had to tune into the news or whatever, like I'm, I keep coming back to alignment. Mm. That's beautiful. I love that. Yeah. Uh, that's something I might consider going forward myself. That's really good because I feel like this is a time about that. I really yeah. I feel like a full run of like an eight hour or whatever. It's too much information right now almost. You know what I mean? Like we have to. So yeah, because the quarantine didn't really slow down parts of my life because I'll even it's, it's a, you know, we live on this beautiful land and I really spent the past decade like bringing things that I need here, building our beautiful 20,000 square foot building and like, you know, even having to work out groceries and all that. Cause it's not like the town that we live nearby has all the beautiful organic and all, you know what I mean? There's not, you don't live here and then go, Oh, I'm hungry. I'm going to run out to the store. <laughs> that doesn't happen. And that's been training us. So we have like wholesale food trucks that come up anyway from, cause we're, we work with our team to order food and that kind of stuff. So we already have these things in motion and I will literally, cause I can walk through the woods to work and that's, I'm kind of complete here on our land. Mm -hmm. So I'll do things like last year. I was like, how long can I go without getting in a car and leaving the land? And I was, you know, I did that for about six months till I had to go somewhere. So I feel like I'm kind of made for not, you know, like I, I can be here. I feel very satisfied with what's here and the people that are here and, you know, my family. So I'm built for that part, the quarantine part for sure. <laughs> yeah. But the meditation's new, you know. 
and what a beautiful place to do it. You talk about walking through the woods and it's like you're surrounded by a lot of support environmentally. Yes, so I, I can go out to books. And yes. I just want to say, I do books for a living. I'm a book writing coach. I take people's books to a guaranteed international bestseller, and I help generally spiritual entrepreneurs learn how to be interviewed on radio and podcasts and get results. I work with books, right? I read a lot of books as a human, but also professionally. Then having people come on the show, I read books. So a lot passes by me that sometimes I typically wouldn't see. And there was so much care. I just want to thank you for that as a reader as a consumer, so much care went into the books. I mean, beautiful, like really the layout. It's so meaningful to me. And I just want to show people because look at this, like, you know, the pictures and most of the pictures are just mine. And I shot them on my iPhone from what was on our land. <laughs> this is beautiful. I have a client actually working on a crystal book right now, and she's going to be doing something very similar. She's a, she's really kind of genius. And so this will be great for her to see. But look, I mean, these are just gorgeous, right? Sorry, this is going in and out, but you can get an idea. So I want to start with the uh, holistic dental care book, which, you know, it's dog-eared everywhere because the intro of this book starts with the sentence, it's knowledgeable about how to care, how to care for, and how to feed our teeth and gums. I have never heard those words before, feeding our gums. So what are our gums hungry for and how can we nurture them? That's a great question. The gums are such an essential part of our mouths. And I'm sure if anybody has experienced a dentist telling them, oh, your gums are receding, that's a bit of an issue. And it's a huge issue. Like that's when you kind of go, oh, maybe you start thinking about your gums then. And yeah, what they, they need to be fed, but I also feel like they also need to not be fed some things. <laughs> so classic, like walking down a drugstore dental aisle, pretty much the whole aisle <laughs> is not needed. And, um, and how we know that even more now is because we know about the microbiome and there's an oral microbiome that is so essential to our health and well-being and our digestive, immune and endocrine systems that we need to know about it and not be assaulting it with things like sodium lauryl sulfate or triclosan or really harsh synthetic alcohols and mouthwashes, which can statistically, it's about 36,000 cases of oral cancer a year from that type of wow. mouthwash, mm -hmm. which is kind of insane. So we need to kind of stop doing a bunch of stuff and then really care for our mouths with some simple things that are tried and true from thousands of years of use from uh, plant extracts, which I like to think of as botanical biotics, sea salt, baking soda. Like if you just ditch everything that you bought for your mouth and just start with baking soda, you're gonna be, you know, worlds ahead of like, you're gonna just, like your mouth's gonna be so happy. It's alkalinizing, it's gonna whiten the teeth. It's like, it's a good thing for the saliva. Our body actually does produce it and it, it declines as we grow in years. So these are substances that are, you know, natural for our body and they're gonna to help to heal and seal the gums. Using sodium lauryl sulfate is, could be a reason why somebody's experiencing bleeding gums. Mm. And when there's bleeding gums, then all of that stuff is entering the bloodstream really quickly. Those toxins from the toothpaste entering the bloodstream. And then when things enter the bloodstream like that, or just the bacteria and viruses that are in our mouth every day, but hopefully if it's in a healthy state, then the good bacteria are helping to balance that. Um, but if not, then we're, we're getting all of that, the bacteria, the viruses into our bloodstream from our mouths. So that's really important to have a sealed and healed gums and something like sodium lauryl sulfate can just literally be causing, could be the cause. Mm. And when you say baking soda, you mean as a toothpaste on a toothpaste? Yeah. Just like pow the powder, you put a pinch on I mean, you can mix it with sea salt. You can add coconut, coconut oil. You could add peppermint oil. I mean, you can grow from there, but mm -hmm. seriously, if you just use baking soda from now till the end of your sweet time, your mouth would be so happy. <laughs> yeah. After reading your book, 
I immediately called, um, I actually don't really see a dentist, I see a periodontist, and there's a story I'll tell you in a minute. Yeah. But I called the periodontist and said, listen, I know I have an appointment coming up, but I wanna add something. I want you to check my entire mouth and make sure, I'm pretty sure I extracted all the metal, but I wanna make sure there's nothing untoured in my mouth. And so I was so grateful after the x-rays and the, you know, checking around, they're like, nope, you're good, you did That's it all. Because yeah, it can be hiding under a crown or something. Right. Some what metal going on there. Yeah. Yeah. And you talk about being able to reverse things. I was grateful for that. So pre knowing you and knowing your brilliance, um, several years ago, I would say four years ago, I went, I had all this mouth pain and I got sent to specialist after specialist ended up at this very lovely periodontist who took a deep look in my mouth and said, I'm so sorry, but you need to have three teeth pulled and you're going to have to get the metal put in and you're going to have to do an implant and it'll be at least $20,000 because I live in Los Angeles. And I was like, a woo What? <laughs> and just the thought of yeah. losing my teeth and at a price point like that, I'll yeah. buy a car, thank you very much. Yeah. So I was scared. That's what I like to say. I was scared straight, right? Yeah. yeah. I literally was scared straight. And I said to the periodontist, you tell me right now, what do I need to do to reverse this? Right. I said, well, look, you're going to Europe. Why don't you take off about six weeks and I'll see you when you come back. But really, I don't know. You know, you're going to have to clean after every single meal. You have to make sure nothing ever remains in there because it immediately becomes bacteria. If you eat a meal and you just let it hang out. Yeah. Uh, when you drink, when you eat, and, you know, increase a little bit the brushing and definitely the flossing and, you know, get little picks and I on it. Then I discovered MMS and I started mm -hmm. playing with that. And I literally went to Europe and that's all I did. And I came back and he went, hmm, well, this is interesting. I think <laughs> we can wait another couple of months, but let's see, mm -hmm. we'll probably still need to do the implants. I will tell you, it's been four years. He, ca he calls me his miracle patient. And he said, it's the first time he's ever seen anyone reverse the situation never had to have the implants. And not only that, but I've regrown the gum tissue and the health of the teeth. Yes. And then I read your book. So I feel like, and now I can take it to a whole nother level. If he thought I was a miracle before. <laughs> yeah, watch out. <laughs> I got Nadine on my team now. <laughs> For sure. So you I'm so glad you didn't have to go that route though, because you don't want to have the metal implants. You, if, if, if it has to be done, it's zirconium is the clean, is the clean option. And um, when the teeth are extracted, it's also very important and it's not normal protocol, but the, that the periodontal ligaments are removed. Mm. And that's because if they don't remove it, then the gum, it basically rots the jaw 40, you know, 40 years later down the line. And then you have jaw cavitations, which is like a tooth cavitation, but in the jaw bone. So thank God you didn't spend $20,000 on a health issue waiting down the road. Yes. So yay, <laughs> like yay. Yay, thank you for that. Oh my God, that's a, that's a horror, it's amazing. So you speak about the jaw, good, perfect. TMJ. Yes. I do sleep with a mouth guard, which I, I question a lot, the validity of a mouth guard, yeah. because yeah. I think people with TMJ are just going to bite down on the mouth guard. So yeah. what do you suggest for <laughs> countering it? Is there a way to counter TMJ? Well, sometimes you do need that buffer, but I do have to say there's been a lot of progress with silicone and like, there's a lot of options on, you know, a a Amazon, for example, or wherever that you don't have to go that full, really expensive route if you just need to start saving the teeth surfaces until you can kind of deal with the problem. Um, yeah, I used to grind my teeth too. I couldn't believe it. when I was like 22, I was suggested to go, they sent me to some clinic and they were going to give me like, I don't know, like a kind of a sleeping pill. And I was like, that doesn't make any sense to me. Like, like that's okay for the rest of my life. And I'd been going to a massage therapist so long ago but she was mis doing the intra oral massage with you know they put on a glove and then you're oh my god and it was making so much improvement mm. that i like knew there was other relief for me plus now learning more about teeth what happens too is a lot of our jaw stuff comes from dental procedures mm. because 
even just removing a tooth or a filling a cavity, the whole occipital ridge, the jaw is like slightly traumatized. You know, and a really good dentist would send you to get osteopathy or cranial sacral after and like readjust that. But think of all the things we had done and we never took care of the bones and the jaw. You know what I mean? After those kinds of things. Is that because the mouth, the jaw is open? So it's such an extremity for so long or what? So many things. Well, just literally taking a, like the, a tooth out or filling it is just like, it's just cal calibrating that area in a, in a way that's like, you know, in a way like kind of having a fall or something where you'd like kind of need a chiropractic adjustment afterwards or a massage, you know, to just bring it back in. So I mean that, you know, and we, we've all had different things or braces or just getting wisdom teeth pulled, like all of that throws the whole thing off, you know, and then we're not eating enough nutrients. So everything's getting smaller in this area. So there's a whole bunch of stuff. And then also it can obviously be a cortisol reaction, a stress issue. Mm. It can even be the products you're using, just throwing things off and adding tension to the area. So what can be done, um, you know, obviously there's the retainer options and the mouth guards and stuff, but going to bed in a different way, like, you know, maybe you need to start sleep differently, monitor sleep, make sure you're getting the REM stage and then like try and go to sleep meditating or, or using something like binaural beats, which kind of do the meditating for you. And if you can find, because they can really make that jaw relaxed, you know, you can kind of like when you're meditating, I mean, hopefully you're not like seized up in the jaw. So you do the things that relax the jaw. And definitely there's um, myofascial specialists that even do Skype appointments and you can retrain things. It's really just a habit of holding your body a certain way, could be from dental trauma or different things, but you just have to kind of slowly but surely unwind that part. Mm. I always feel like I look like a football player when I go to bed. <laughs> I've got the mouth guard. I've got the face mask. I do listen to meditation. So I was trying to consolidate and I found on Amazon this band that goes over the eyes to blacken things out. And then it's got um, things that go right in the ears so you can listen to the binaural beats. One last That's thing. Cool. And it's yeah. really very nice, very comfortable on the head that is so interesting i never thought about the car cortisol because i'm very relaxed personally going to a dentist but i i do know there's many many people who will literally resist going to a dentist because it brings up so much concern and stress uh so yeah this is making a lot of sense and i like the fact that you're giving us some tips so let's go to the tips mm -hmm. people who are listening and Gosh, they have time on their hands right now to implement things, to possibly yeah. invest in some new practices. So let's support them there. What can change our experience? So much less dentists, much less periodontists, but much more health going on. Yeah, the and I have eight steps that I've made. I'm sure you read about them in the book and it's on our website, many places, there's videos and all that, but that really will, if you follow those eight steps, and you can, we, I make a wide range of really beautiful, potent dental products and serums, but you don't even have to go there. That would, you know, really accelerate things. But literally, once again, you can do those eight steps with just baking soda or sea salt. And wherever your mouth's at today, it will improve. So also, if you have to go to the dentist soon or the hygienist to get a cleaning, do these steps first, you know, do them in quarantine. And by the time you can get out, you know, your mouth will be in a new shape and then your appointment will be better and maybe less expensive. And you know what I mean? All of that. So this is the time now to do it. We also do um, consults. We've offered them before, but usually about half an hour, um, like you can call us or email us and you can just t tell us all your dental issues, your skin issues, and we will just walk you through solutions and, and, and if we don't have an answer, if it's complicated or something, then we'll send you to resources and where you can take care of things. And we just really believe in education, as maybe you can tell from the books. We just like to go in deep and deliver. Yeah, you're like a nerd scientist, <laughs> essential oil, <laughs> brilliant naturalist. It's really, it's a great soup. Thanks. <laughs> How do these celebrities find you? So you've got all these beautiful followers and 
great yeah. people, really good credits, but how did they find living libations? That's a great question. Well, you know, when I was 22, I opened up North America's first full concept aromatherapy store, and that was in Toronto on Queen Street. And so that was like a little beacon. And then people would come in. I, you know, like I, I met so many people that way. But one of the, fun, like Alanis came, one day she was coming to Toronto for a concert. And she's like, to her friend, when we had mutual friends, she said, oh my gosh, there's this aromatherapy store. I've got to go to it. And her friend was like, I know the friend of a friend or whatever. So we got a call and we met her at the store after her concert. It was like at midnight. And that was so fun. She was like a kid in a candy store. And that was such a great moment. And so we've been connected since then. And, um, and then I don't, I don't know. It just, it just slowly gets out and, um, you know, or like I saw one fun, I saw Lisa Benet once at a friend's party. I didn't know it was her right away, but she was very pivotal when I was at this moment. I was about 18 years old and I was at university and I was just starting to make, you know, you're on your own, making my own food and stuff. And I was skipping school and I saw her on TV and she was talking about the connection between food and the environment and health. And we didn't know that then. <laughs> So this was like radical. And I was like, oh my God, this makes so much sense. And from that moment forward, I really thought about what, it was like a whole a month where I just radically shifted what I ate. So there was a farmer's market, there was a health food store. I started reading labels. I, I read a book on reading labels. <laughs> then I was like, oh my God, all my skincare is totally like just petroleum, even though I thought it was natural, like the body shop I was into at that time. Mm. And I was like, it's just total BS. It's just you know, yeah. repackaged. Mm -hmm. So it was really that moment that was quite life changing. And I started making all my own skincare products. So then fast forward to a few years ago and I met her and she was so thankful, just thanking me for something. She had just listened to some podcast I was on or something. And, uh, and then I was like, I was able to share with her how really we're at this moment because of her. <laughs> so oh. that was really special. Yeah. That's, that's and, and then my sweet friend, Carrie Ann, who I just love so much, she just emailed me one day because she was at somebody's house and had opened a bottle of the Rose Glow Serum and was just like, I need to meet this woman. Mm -hmm. And she just emailed me and was like, I need to meet you. So I was like, okay, <laughs> things like that. And then she wrote the forward in your book. And then she wrote the forward in the book. Yeah. So where she, we really are today. Yeah. Amazing. Uh, so... You are a successful businesswoman, right? From being in 18 and 20 and in university and, and being influenced and impacted by this truth that you're hearing, which is great that you didn't just listen to it, but you actually followed up, investigated, researched, and started applicating it to your life, getting results. And then, you know, here you are giving it as a gift out to the world. What kind of habits do you have, Nadine, as a businesswoman that you feel have helped you succeed, helped you run living libations to the extent and the popularity that it is? That's a good question. Um, I th well, first of all, there is obviously a passion that's beyond, you know what I mean? That's just like something dropped in, obviously, at some point in my childhood. And I listened to that. And also, as a child... I, you know, I didn't know what it was called then, but I always focused on my strengths. So mm -hmm. if I wasn't into something, which I'm sure was a nuisance for the parents and the teachers and all that, but there was like, almost like, just no, <laughs> like, you know, but I, if I love something fully engaged and I just kept following that and, and sensitive with my body, kind of pretend that I'm like the princess and the pea, but with like health and my body. So such a sensitivity that I, if, if I was doing something and it didn't feel right, then it would just be like, oh, okay, that's over. And so just through those sensitivities and like, you know, understanding how I was acting or interacting with my body, it just, you know, became, it narrowed a portal, but then it opened up this whole world of botanicals and beauty. So really through following that calling and listening to the sort of unseen alchemists that, you know, are sort of, talking to me in my head or that those early whisperings are so key to follow. And then I think um, 
and then you know there's going to be stages with entrepreneur i mean there's st times when you're like i didn't sign up for this or i wanted to blend <laughs> jasmine i didn't want to talk to insurance brokers uh. you know and you gotta keep riding through you know all the stages and um i think one thing that's been neat having you know been doing business for a couple decades is like it really just keeps evolving for you so i know there's people that kind of keep doing different businesses and that that's cool too but i just find really within the one business wow like so many chapters so many roles you know it's just it's endless it can really serve you and propel you on whatever journey you're on beautiful well when we come back we'll have a little bit more conversation with nadine artemis and if you are at home if you are somewhere out in the world and saying gosh my bucket list haven't done it yet, but I've always wanted to write a book. I'm going to give you two perfect options right now that you can start right now. The first is an author membership where I live guide you as a coach how to write your book. And you can go to debbiedashinger.com slash visible visionaries, D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R.com slash visible visionaries. And I am teaching you the entire system so you can write a page turner book and get it published this year. And if you would like a less arduous, if you will, or a more easy way to do a book, you can write a chapter in an anthology. There's a new anthology that's rolling out that I've got authors registering for, and it's about dogs. How does it get any better than that? If you love canines or canine or pups or you're a pet lover, you can write fiction, nonfiction, poem. It's all wonderful because the more varied an anthology compilation, the better. Go to debbyd.net slash anthology and you'll see the amazing, amazing bonuses that come with this for all the authors. We do have people registering. So if you would like to write a chapter, I guide you through the whole process. Go to debbid.net slash anthology. And it'll be in my honor to take you either to write your book or to write your chapter in the dog anthology. So if you're tuning in after we've started, this is Debbie Dashinger, the award-winning podcast, Dare to Dream. I'm speaking with Nadine Artemis. She's the creator of Living Libations, an exquisite line of serums elixirs and essential oils for those seeking the purest botanical health and you can find out more about this woman and her business at livinglibations.com and i want to ask you first about let me see if i can pop you in here hmm. i want to ask you first nadine about this word which i find fascinating and the word is an aromacologist mm -hmm. it sounds so beautiful i was born in the year of the dog and i have to say i have a very sensitive nose mm -hmm. and i love perfumed oils and um, things that smell amazing i'm very sensitive both ways so do you need to have a really amazing nose to be an, an aromacologist? And what does all of that entail? Yeah, I think so, because, you know, it is about discerning scent. Um, and I did discover early on I had when if it's something was synthetic, I just would have like this thing go off in my right here, which is really above the whole nasal chamber anyway. So it's so easy to so be. How do you tell? And I'm like, oh, it just was like, wah, wah, you know. <laughs> So it's really just the, the art and the study of, of, um, of aromas and then their application. So for me, it's like a lot of the application is through botanical formulating and that combination and then using all the aromatics as this really potent palette to not only perfume, and I, again, when I say perfume, it's within the natural realm, mm -hmm. um, but the, even if you didn't have a sense of smell, those ingredients, those extracts, those distillations still have a physiological effect on the body. Mm. So if you can't smell, but you're smelling, or you're inhaling rosemary, you know, those molecules will travel up into the body and help the lungs and help the body do their job and that kind of thing. So it's really potent. And 
and again, even though they have a sense of smell, they have so much sort of weight physically. They're all, all essential oils are to varying degree, antifungal, antiviral, antibacterial, anti-inflammatory. So, you know, there's just so much to them that's beyond the smell. I'm kind of fascinated by neem, N-E-E-M. Yeah. Yep. It is really not a pleasant smell. No, it's right? like one of the most bitter herbs on the planet. So it's bitter in the true sense of the word, but it's anti-parasite, you know, it's paras So it's, it's got job to do. It's so good for digestion, obviously with the bitters. Um, it's a potent plant. How would you use the oil? Oil will, I use it in a lot of the botanical formulations for teeth care. It's so good for gum. So you can rub it, right? And then again, we're working with the digestive process. And this obviously is connected to digestion. It's so, so stinky, then, right? Like how do you Yeah, do it's that? stinky. But we put it, one we have called Yogi 2 Serum. And it's cardamom and cinnamon and cayenne and neem. And it's potent. And people love it. And of course, there's people that try it first time and they're like, okay. <laughs> you know, that's really bitter. Is that right? And it's like, yeah, you know, it, it is. Um, but it is a weird product because it's not all just like fun and minty, but it's so beloved. And it really, it's just so good for gum care. So you could just take that oil and rub it on the gums. And tell me, what was that called? What's that? Tell me the, again, the name of that. Oh, tooth product? that's Yogi Tooth Serum. Yogi, that sounds amazing. Yeah, we do have fun minty ones that are, you know, again, but the mint is real and it's a workhorse, but there are pleasant, you know, dental serums that we make as well. But the Yogi is such a classic. And then we also have a neem uh, clay toothpaste and we also have another uh, toothpaste called neem enamelizer. And they're so popular, even though, again, some people write, they're like, did I buy this, <laughs> you know, do I want to be this bitter? It's like, yep. <laughs> Oh yeah, because I have the oil and I've you know used it on my skin and it's like I know it doesn't. I've read up on it. It does exquisite things, but dear God, I'm like, you know, yeah. let me do it when I'm not going to see anybody for a while. Yeah, I think I mean, if you're going to do or even a scalp cream or something like you just do it and then you, it's like your own private spa. It's not <laughs> like oh, I'm going to put it you know all over my body. But you're for not some going reason, out. Yeah, but you can definitely use it in your mouth and it 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 creates great breath, even though there's that. Mm -hmm. It's a weird taste on your tongue okay. but it gets all the digestive juices flowing too so then your body's kicking in as well that's so beautiful yeah I'm gonna try it I like playing around with things like yeah. that as you said I mean we're all at a baseline right now so anything we use that you recommend you'll know very quickly if your health is going up right yeah an increase happening and that's really important yeah. And you, once you, I mean, following those steps, you'll see improvements right away. Like literally some, it depends, you know, on the state of your mouth, but some people, you know, if they, cause I recommend flossing twice. And then you, if you want to up the practice, you could take one drop of that Yogi 2 serum, slide it along the floss. And now you're flossing, Ooh. right? You're getting all that good uh, botanical biotics up into those crevices. And when you floss twice, you kind of see why, cause there's like a whole other round of stuff that comes out. Really? Um, but some people with bleeding gums that might clear up overnight. Like literally I've had people use that floss with it and now they don't bleed when they floss. Not going to happen for everybody. Sometimes it'll take a week or so, but I mean, improvements can happen so fast because the skin, the epithelium in the mouth is only one cell thick. So it's a bit of an Achilles heel because it can be, it can leak really, you know, we can get the opening to the bloodstream really fast if there's something bleeding. But at the same time, I mean, it can really speed up and heal quite quickly because it is only one cell. So I have to ask, it's sort of like an accident you don't want to look at. Yeah. But when you say, if you will floss twice, things will come out that will surprise you. What are we talking about? Oh no. I mean, just like, you're like, oh, I thought, you know, you might do your whole mouth and think you're really diligent. You do it again. And you're just like, oh, there's like more little food and plaque and stuff. Ah. So it's not, <laughs> nothing radical, but just people are like, why twice? And I'm like, well, just do it. And you realize it's not perfectly clean. I mean, mm -hmm. I probably can even do a third and you don't have to do that. Like you kind of, sometimes you have to do it and bring things up. Mm. to speed and then you know maybe. Them maybe yeah yeah i've done that with the with the little trees they call them yeah um dental yeah. trees and then yeah. you floss and without a doubt still yeah e each one seems to have its 
forte and the, yes or maybe it does you know loosen something up for the next round so yeah that's great i want to go to the title if you will because it's you know just so yummy and this is directly from you which is link is there a link between orgasms meditation and manifestation orgasms meditation and manifestation is there a link I think there is a link. <laughs> okay. What would that be? Well, I think one of, when, we're, when we're meditating, it's to come into alignment. And really in that alignment, it's, a, it's like a forgetting of the self, right? Because if you're in, like not, you know, when you're you know, on a meditation sort of surf here, you're catching that meditation wave. You're not just like, you know, trying and then the grocery list is still happening right? I mean, we all have those moments when we're meditating, but when you're in that zone, that's a forgetting of the self, which is really the orgasm is also that moment. And I feel like that's also the moment when we're in trance and enraptured by beauty. Mm -hmm. The sunrise is like in that moment when you're really present, you don't, there's no self. And like, what do I, you know, and that whole river of thoughts that we have every moment. So, and then when we get out of the way, and we have those moments where we're not involved with the self, that's, I feel, when manifestation also occurs. Mm. Because, yes, you know, we have, you know, if you, you know, you can have a break when you're sleeping and you can restore and that kind of thing. But I think one of the main things for meditation is to be awake and have these moments of, I'll just non-self, that seems what I'm going with today, but those moments where you're out of the way and that's when i feel like you know that's when the floodgates open for all of the things that you have been you know going through your life and figuring out what you want what you don't want in those dreams and all of that then then it almost like the whoo it opens and then that little slide the manifestation slide can come in and deliver because in those moments we don't have split energy of like because a lot of the day we're like, oh, I'd love to do that. Oh, but can I, you know what I mean? We kind of, we're, we're doing that a lot all day, having split thoughts. And in those moments, we're not having split thought. And as soon as we get cleared of those forks in the road of our thinking, then the good stuff happens. Because then we're receiving, we're allowing all that good stuff. And there's a lot of non-attachment in all of yeah, those. There it's is, but we don't want to get too then split up with the attachment, non-attachment. It is non-attachment, but it's almost like a kind of non-attachment that has no opposite, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. Uh, very much so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm intimate with that and manifestation because I've recognized how many things come with so much ease that I've desired, but I had, yeah, I mean, I've really, really wanted it, but you know, yeah. and boom, it's there if there's a lot of internal effort, not even external action, but internal desiring, needing yeah. that there's Will it happen? Doubt, fear, insecurities. Yeah. Those are the harbingers of non-manifestation. That is exactly right. <laughs> yeah, totally. And you have an amazing story, don't you? You had um, a tragedy happen with a fire that yeah. your life. We, um, yeah, it was in 2013 and just in the middle of the night, you know, just everything was in flames, like everything. In your yeah. home? Yeah, our home and our headquarters, which was attached to it at that time. So it was oh. just like everything. It was actually, that was so full on and busy. We'd actually moved into little cabins, you know, at that time, because we were about to build the next headquarters on another part in our land. We only had like, we were, we broke ground. We were like, you know, the plans were in the, per like that was going to happen on the Monday, like mm -hmm. the, you know, and that, sorry, this happened on a Saturday, a Saturday, like a Saturday, Sunday. Mm -hmm. And we'd say for years and we zoned the land and then it just all went up and um, it was, it was just so crazy. I mean, luckily we had savings because we were sa we saved to build the next building, mm -hmm. but we had to just re like, we literally had no business materials all you know, liters of frankincense up in flames you know the computers the hard drives like 
all, you know, all the beautiful inventory we just made because, you know, we just, I remember it was August and we were getting ready for that, you know, the, the fall, the winter, I mean, the Chris, you know, that Christmas thing. And we're just so ripe with oils at that time of year too, because many of the distillations have been completed in June and they're the very rich ones like Neroli and Rose and Immortal had all just arrived. And again, it went all up and my mom had died six months earlier and wow. all her heirlooms went up. I mean, it was just on and on and on. That's a lot. Yeah, that was a lot. How and uh, cover? well, you know, it's just like one step at a time. But of course, I mean, it was, it was, you know, in community and our team, somehow though, our team, we didn't even miss a day of work, even though we didn't have anything. Because as well, you realize, well, we still have like a website and we still have the so many clients that are like, no, you know, this keep this living libations can't go. So it was great because we, we, we sent out a newsletter and said, you know, Monday morning, this is what's happening. But we said, you know, order as you will. And somehow we're going to try and start shipping in September. And somehow we did. And we, so we had a normal month. So it was great because all the flow was still happening. Yeah. And we just slowly, and I mean, we have such a complex operation on one level. I mean, it's over 300 raw materials. I mean, to resource all of that. And, and, and we just bought out distiller because it was like June. So we're like, they just, you know, the 20 liters for us. And that was it for the year. You know what I mean? So we had, it was complicated. And then we just, whatever we could make first, we sent out and we just slowly did that. Um, you know, we, our friend said, come use, you know, he gave us his whole 5,000 square foot um, place. So we were able to, you know, at least we had no, nothing to move in, but we were able to start operating right away and just slowly, but surely, I don't know, you know, through all the graces of life. Mm -hmm. But there was a moment where I was just like, oh my God, like, do I have to redo the last 20 years? You know, I, I thought, but I didn't. <laughs> You know, like you think it all goes, but it doesn't because your business is more than materials, mm. you know? Yeah. And here you are. And here we are. Resilience. It's amazing. <laughs> well, I want to do a quick lightning round with you. Okay. I had some listeners who knew you were coming on the show. And I think we have three questions that people sent in. So let's see if we can quickly help some people. Okay. Um, so Renegade Beauty for Direction and Problematic Areas. There, let's see, this listener is Jill, mm -hmm. who asked Nadine, I have dandruff and it looks awful. I've tried rosemary oil, expensive organic dandruff shampoos with oils in them and all to no avail. I have wavy dry hair. Are there, is there a real solution you know that works? Yes, we've had lots of improvement. First of all, just at home, you can, you know, maybe you need a shower filter. Easy to get one. Again, I'm not trying to promote Amazon, but you know what I mean? Like at a market, you can get them for like 20, 20, $30. So that would be great because the chlorine on top of all that, you know, that's messing with the scalp's microbiome. And then often, you know, there could be something underlying like with the gut. So you know, maybe elimination diet of like sugar, you know, try that. Something could be aggravating it or feeding because uh, it, it could be like a topical fungus. So those are some things to look at. And certainly Jill, email us for more. Um, people also have had great improvements with our shampoo and our scalp oils. Um, I like to always give those other things to do first, but the fun thing is a lot of people just use the product and they don't have to make any dietary changes. So <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of fun too. Um, the, our true blue shampoo, I think is better for that. And then we literally have something called scalp tonic. Also, I mean, you know, it, rosemary is great, but we don't know the kind or, you know, and you want to apply it with oil and just applying rosemary wouldn't quite do it. Cause it also could be the shampoo. It doesn't mean you need a, a the, and the dandruff shampoos have a lot of different chemicals, but it could just be a common ingredient in a lot of shampoos, like a sodium lauryl sulfate, that's just continually aggravating it. And maybe you can't get away from it because it could have been a common ingredient in all those shampoos. Okay, excellent. Melanie wrote in, I have middle age hormone related acne. Yeah. Hate what it does to my face. How can I get rid of the unsightly acne? She has more information here in case you needed it. Like, you know, she is managing her hormones through um, bioidenticals and good yeah, good yeah because sometimes it could be a drop in progesterone 
So, but it sounds like she's on that. And then again, food choices, like even within healthy foods, some could be aggravating, like cashews are such an, for, if you get acne and you're eating cashews, totally most likely related. Who would have known that? That's I know, no, I didn't know. I didn't know until literally, yeah. So, or soy, huge hormone aggravator. So, you know, there could be things to look at there. Um, but then again, oh my God, this, the vicious cycle we start with products and then attacking the acne and then the chemicals and drying out and using soap. So um, I write about it in Renegade Beauty and it's on our website, but don't use soap to wash your face. So we use oil and it sounds like you may have gotten like one of our best skin ever's. And so for people with acne, sometimes it's like, really? I got to wash with oil. <laughs> you know, it's like it's scary but it really, it evolves everything because there's such a, we're messing around with the sebum and then the lipid barriers and the stratum corneum and it's getting so just messed with and then it's, tr the skin keeps trying to like rebalance itself. Mm. So really recommend like, you know, I'm not sure what she's using right now, but just like kind of leaving that all behind and just start cleansing and washing with oil and the same bottle could cleanse and moisturize you can keep it really simple. We do have the one bottle to do it all, but there's also other options. And it smells like heaven, just, you know, it's yeah. <laughs> very pretty too, to keep on the counter. Um, Tim wrote in, I'd like to naturally minimize wrinkles and get rid of age-related facial skin. Oh, okay, got it. So wrinkles and yeah. whatever else happens with age. Yeah. Can you offer effective renegade beauty solutions? Yes. Well, again, kind of what I was saying before, but it's not acne related, but yeah, we need to get rid of like all the products that are messing with our microbiome. It's like, we want to kind of stand back and let the bacteria of our microbiome be our beautician. And we can't just keep adding chemicals that are like assaulting and, and ruining the diversity of it. And then creating things like melasma, creating cell dehydration. Mm. You know, there's no cell in our body that's parched for petroleum. So there's like a whole bunch of beauty care products that like no matter what the ad says or looks like, it's not doing anything. It's not even keeping your skin at neutral. It's literally tipping it into like, you know, things you're going to have to catch up with like 10 years down the road. So you want to just, you know, ditch that stuff. And then again, just work with, you know, if it, it's so for the guy with the best skin ever are great for guys too. We got the frankincense best skin ever, the sandalwood best skin ever. Mm. And, you know, just start replenishing and allowing the lipid barriers and the skin to, to start working. Because, you know, just like with our teeth, we got to kind of get out of the way and allow the forces of our body that were designed to take care of everything to do its job. Mm. Okay. And you say, Nadine, that there's a connection between our mouth health, our immunity, our ears, our nose, and our lungs, which is, yeah. this is like really important right now. Yes. Which is another reason why, you know, like not just to have good teeth so you don't have a $20,000 dental appointment, but like, because it is all going in and biofilms do go into our body. So, you know, and there's a whole, yeah, the ear, nose, throat microbiome we really want to keep clean and then using that baking soda keeps the saliva alkaline and we want to keep our noses moist. You know, some of us are coming out of using heat all winter, drying things out. We don't want to let that mucous membrane get dry. You know, we have bombs that you can put up there. My, my book has a recipe for a nose bomb. So we've got to keep that whole system healthy and by not, you know, swallowing the plaque and the sodium lauryl sulfate and that kind of stuff. That's very interesting. There is a doctor, a local surgeon here in Be Beverly Hills is the next town over from me, who put out an email. I thought it was really kind. And he was saying, you know, there's a reason why surgeons wash their hands, but please understand they also wash their noses. And I'm telling you, because at a time like this, it could actually assist you. And uh, that really resonated with me. That made sense. So things don't get trapped at a time like this when this is something that can go in through the eyes or the nose, the COVID-19. And so your nose balm, you're talking about, is that an internal balm? Yeah, well, yeah, the recipes for that. And we also just have, like, uh, we also just make bombs that you can apply anywhere. So we have one called Immune Alum Balm. Mm -hmm. I take that flying. And I mean, for decades, mm -hmm. I've, I've, I put a little in my ears, a little up my nose, a little under my nose. And then uh, we actually, I've been making masks for years. <laughs> 
because I, when I fly, I didn't, I put them, I coat them with essential oils and then go over. Mm. So obviously we've upped our production these days, but you know, when I fly, my whole goal for years has been not to inhale <laughs> the air and not to touch anything. So, uh, you know, that's why we have like the immune balm, hand sanitizers, you know, keeping everything clean. But soap really does work. And again, of course, um, I'm going to be using natural soap and that's a you know, better thing. We have beautiful clay soaps and stuff, but any soap, literally, it's just the, it's the amp amplifiles, which just remove the coating, which isn't very strong around a virus. It literally bursts it open, washes it down the drain. So soap is simple but it seriously, it works. Yes. And I want to concur with what you're saying. I had to fly somewhere. I had an essential trip that I had to take. And a friend who has a stewardess in her family said, I'll tell you something that stewardess do. They will use like the thieves oil, which is yep. phenomenal. I mean, I drink <laughs> it. I, you know, use it for everything, your hands, so forth. Just use a tiny bit of Vaseline and the mm -hmm. or some kind of conduit and you just tuck it inside the nose. And then like you said, in the mask, when you fly, who knew? That yeah, that's basically the bomb trick. There you go. <laughs> there you go. And it got me there and back safe. That's for Shoa. Yep. Yeah. So darling, uh, another, a thing you just remind me, another tip is I'll take, yeah. uh, scrub my hands and then I'll put a drop of tea tree in the whites and then also makes it kind of look like a French manicure because it whitens them but then you've got super clean hands too oh amazing yeah yeah that's great because tea tree oil is one of the ingredients that the World Health Organization recommends when you make your own home scent hand sanitizer. yes and there's studies they're all out there like it just shows even I know it's a different creature but tea tree at like under 1% is effective um, for h1n1 for example at under one percent maybe under two percent it's really small <laughs> but it's like you know what i mean like a tiny amount of tea tree oil is effective against other viruses we have seen it doesn't mean it's effective against this one but i'm just using it as an example of like it's clean it keeps us clean yeah it's interesting because for years you know i've always cleaned my yoga mat after a certain amount of uses i yeah. soak it in the bathtub and the bathtub is always filled with water and tea tree oil Right. And I think it keeps the mat itself really nice mm -hmm. and crispy. And then soak, I mean, it smells amazing. And then it's so clean after, and they dry very, very quickly. That so it just sense. gets tons of uses for this. I, I love this conversation. Uh, so I want to ask you about your dreams, because this is Dare mm. to Dream. So Nadine, what are you next Dare to Dream? What are your future dreams and goals? Oh, that's such a great question and such an interesting time to ask it at because on one level, humanity is almost being asked to not make plans. <laughs> you know, I mean, you know what I mean? Like we've all, I'm sure all of us have had to cancel micro and macro plans and visions and that kind of thing. In this moment, um, I feel like I've accomplished a lot of things that were on my list and I'm really into listening to the inspiration that comes and flowing with that mm -hmm. and always seeking alignment and and just more of what we're doing i know it sounds pretty simple but it's just like more more alignment more connection otherwise i'm feeling pretty satisfied and i also know that i have probably more you know in the rest for the rest of my life there's just there's gonna be so much inspiration that i don't even have to think about it do you know what i mean like if that's done like i don't have to worry about another creative project because they come in so fast it's just just like that'll be fine i just have to listen you know and tune in and i'm good <laughs> that's beautiful and meditate six times a day yeah right now anyway <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on and sharing your brilliance. This has been a joy. Thank you. You're such a, such a delight. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, so I want to end today's show with this quote. This is from Abdul Baha. Sometimes I want to ask God why he allows poverty, famine, and injustice when he could do something about it. But I'm afraid God might just ask me the same question. Subscribe to the Dare to Dream podcast to hear the weekly number one transformation conversation. 
My upcoming guest next week is Sean Stone. Yes, that's Oliver Stone's son, but he's a man of his own right. He's been on the show before. He's an American actor, a film director, producer, cinematographer, screenwriter, and a TV host. He's going to be talking about his new Audible book, Desiderata. You can subscribe to the show at youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger. Thank you for joining me. And again, if you would like to write right now, if this is a great gestation period for you to create out into the world, that which is your voice that you came to sing out loud or express into the world, I'm honored to help you. If you'd like to write a book, go to debbiedashinger.com slash visible visionaries and if you'd prefer instead and or to write a chapter in a dog woof anthology go to debbie d.net slash anthology and just remember the secret of success for all of us is having the initiative as nadine said so beautifully the place where manifestation and meditation and orgasm meet where it is truly transcendent is when it just is it's the pure connection with the all that is with no thought step into that and be that and put out into the world that which you came here to do thank you for joining us today on dare to dream